Welcome! In this video, I will create a navigation pane in Power BI. As with a number of things in Power BI, there's more than one way to do this. But in this video, I will use the inbuilt pane navigation and I will create this. Whereby the navigation pane changes as the user hovers over it or presses a button. I have set up the report and added four pages to the report. The pages are summary, income, expenses and budget. And all of the pages are just currently blank. I have left these three pages hidden because when this report is pushed up to the service, I would like the user just to see the summary page and only be able to access the other pages through the navigation pane. To add the navigation pane, I go to insert, then to buttons. From the list which appears, I go to the bottom of the list and if I hover over navigator, I can select page navigator. And a navigation pane appears with all of my pages already fully loaded into the pane. One point to note is that if I add another page to my report, so for instance, if I go here and just call this new page and then go back to my summary page, you can see that new page is automatically added to my navigation pane. I will delete that new page because I don't need it. So that is just something to watch out for because you may not want all new pages to be automatically added to the navigation pane. The pages which are hidden are currently shown in the navigation pane because if I click on my navigation pane, with my navigation pane selected, if I then look at the visual section and pages and click the drop down list, you can see that show hidden pages is toggled to on. You therefore have the option to toggle it to off if you want to keep your hidden pages hidden. The next thing that you could potentially consider is your grid layout. For my navigation pane, I would like it to be horizontal. There is the option to change it to vertical or to create a grid. The default shape of the items within the navigation pane is rectangle, but we can change that shape. And I would like something a bit more rounded in nature. So again, in the visual section, if I click on shape, I have the option to choose any of these shapes. So for instance, I might want an oval or maybe a rounded rectangle. But for this video, I would prefer my navigation boxes to be in the shape of a pill. So pill is the one I will select. And that automatically updates our navigation pane. I will now turn my attention to the style option. So if I click the style option to expand it, and it's here that we can really start to bring our navigation bar to life. So I will start with the state default. There are other options and I will come back to each of these in turn, but let's start with default. And in this video, when I'm considering the default state, I'm really going to focus my attention on income, expenses and budget. If I scroll down into the text section, I would like to change the colour of the text within the pills to dark grey. So I just click on the font colour and choose the dark grey colour. The only other change I would like the default view of these pills to have is a border that is also the same colour as the font. So if I scroll down to the border section, click on the border and I will change the colour to dark grey. There were other options I could have applied to this default state, but for now I'm happy leaving things as they are. To aid with this video, I'm just going to 
pool a bit more across here. So you can see it a bit clearer when I make the changes in the format section. So if I scroll back up to style, we now look at the changes we would like to make for the next state. So the next state is hover. So I select hover. This time for hover, I'm happy with the colour of my text. I don't want to change it. And again, we are still looking at income, expenses and budget when we are looking at hover. I will leave my text colour as it is. And I'm also happy with the alignment. But this time I would like to change the padding. I would like when somebody hovers over the box for the wording to jump up slightly. And to do that, I change the padding. Here in the bottom padding, I will change this to four pixels. Now, when I hover over a cell, it jumps up slightly. The other thing I would like to change when the user hovers over one of the pills is for it to change color. So this time I will go to the fill section and click on the color. And I will select the colour, which has the hex code C2D5E5. Now, when I hover over a pill, the writing jumps up and the colour of the cell changes. I will leave the border as is. If I go back up to my start of my style section again, and this time for state, I select the next one, which is press. When the user presses on the button, I would like the writing to stand out a bit more. So this time I'm going to change the text to black. I will keep the alignment the same. But this time when the user presses the button, I would like the wording to go down as if it looks like it's getting pressed down. And to do that, I need to change the padding again. So if I scroll down slightly, for the padding, I will change the top padding to four pixels. If I then press on the button, you will see that the wording jumps down. When the user presses on the button, I would also like the button to change colour. So therefore, in the fill section, I will change the colour to blue colour and for that one I'm going to use the hex code AOD1FF. You can use whatever colours you like. This is just a colour palette that I'm trying to keep throughout this report. Now if I press on one of the buttons and I will hold it down so that you can see the impact, the colour of the background changes and the word jump down slightly. We can now go back up to the top of style and select the last state on the list, which is selected. This time our focus is going to be on the summary button because it is the one currently selected. This time I would like the font colour to be the same as that when the button was pressed down. So for that I need to change the font colour to black. Note that this will temporarily make our wording disappear, but we'll fix that in a moment. I would like the fill of the button when it is selected to be a greyish blue colour. So if I go down to the fill section, click on the colour. Again, I'm going to use a hex code and this time I'm going to use D, F, E, E, F, B. Again, you can use whatever colour you like. That is all the alterations I'm going to make to my navigation pane. You have the ability to make more changes. Um, you can put a shadow or a glow to each of the pills, but that will make them really quite stand out and that's not what I'm looking for in my report. I want them to blend in. You also have the options in general. 
to put more effects onto the navigation pane. For instance, you can put a background on. So I can put in, say, a blue and add a border. And that just can help make them look like all the pills should be kept together. In my case, I'm going to remove the effects that we just added there. Removing the background and the visual border. Now that I've removed the background, it looks a bit like the pills are just suspended mid-air. Therefore, to make them look like they're a bit more joined together, I'm going to put a shape behind the navigation pane. I will drag my navigation pane a bit more to the centre. I will add a shape. So clicking on shapes in the insert section, I will choose the pill shape because that will keep the design in line with my navigation bar. I will change the shape because I want it to be bigger than my navigation pane length. And I want this to be a lot smaller. I just want a little band going across the panes. I will then move this and centre it in the middle of my navigation bar. Once centred, I will move the shape such that it's behind my pills. So click on the shape in format. I will click to send backwards. Click send to back. And the only other thing I will do is change the colour of the shape slightly because it's a bit too dark for my colour palette. So with the shape selected in style, I will change the transparency to 25. I will now highlight both the shape and the navigation bar. Then in format, I select group group and that groups these two items together. That means if I move the navigation bar, the shape will move with it. And that is my new navigation pane created. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to hear more from me, please click the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.